Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome to the chaos March 1st chaos DEI meeting. I the minutes are in the chat for if you could share those. I just keep sharing them as people just join. keep sharing them now that we're doing this. Um, I will share my screen. And so today it's to add yourself and tell us the name of your pet, a pet you know, or a pet you have known in the past. Mm. And maybe, yes, maybe, and this is, maybe you could tell us what kind of animal it was. Oh, yeah. You have so many. <laughs> I keep waiting for you to get like snakes and. <laughs> That's the one that. thing I won't get. <laughs> Chameleons and stuff. Oh, God. They are cool. Yeah. We have, we have friends that just finally decided to buy a farm because they had so many animals in their backyard. <laughs> it's like they've got goats and chickens and horses and it's just. I had a fish tank for a long, long time. I didn't name my fish though. Yeah, fish are ephemeral. So <laughs> one time I had a bunk bed and I had the fish tank sitting to the side of the bunk bed. Oh, this sounds bad. And I was going up the ladder and I like kicked, you know, like kind of kicked off the ladder to get up to the yeah. top bunk and the whole yeah. ladder fell and hit the fish tank. <laughs> and did it break it? Oh yeah. There were, oh wow. Second yeah. floor, there was water everywhere. Uh, you know, I kind of felt where that everywhere. was felt where that was going and I was not disappointed. It was a bad day. <laughs> oh, I bet. Yeah, the poor fishies indeed. Yeah. <laughs> What a way to go! Your 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 habitat just disappears overnight. <laughs> just like instantly, yeah. you're yeah. swimming around. <laughs> All right. Um. So let's go ahead and get started. I think we have a couple things to take a look at today. Um. So I just I was curious, Elizabeth. I know you're having a hard time talking, but if there were any kind of project badging updates that you wanted to provide, I I don't know that we've talked about this. I'm actually going to let Sean <laughs> take okay. it he probably has a better update so, than I do. <clears throat> just project badging and how, just kind of an update for folks who may so, not be um, directly involved in project badging. Uh, so Enoch uh, and Ruth uh, and I are coordinating uh, getting the project started. I'm still working through the formalities of the contract at my end, but I've got an uh, invoice of uh, the starter maybe, maybe amount. More, maybe more about like the actual oh like, so what we're looking at project badging so yeah i mean what we're what we're looking at is um what i need to bring up the um the actual document that would probably help to um are you talking about that image yeah I can yeah up. just give me a second okay Let's see if it finds it first sorry sean i didn't mean to put you on the spot <laughs> oh no not a problem at all I do, I do have a probably more of an update and my, my initial administrative update <laughs> was um, <laughs> not, not, not what we were exactly not, not where looking I was for. Going. Is this what you're talking about? Yep. Yeah. So um, effectively, so we're, we're getting started. We're kicking this project off now. And uh, um, there's a, a part that a uh, route that Cass Africa is working on and a part that we're working on here at the University of Missouri. And so in between, at the granting of each badge, there's um, a test of the DEI.MD uh, award badge. So looking for that file and its completeness and that part and the maintenance of the list of badged projects is uh, the part that uh, Enoch and, Kay and uh, Ruth and Kaz Africa are working on. And then there's a report at the granting of each badge level that provides information to the project on uh, their practices that relate to newcomer retention as well as some very carefully um, uh, carefully um, maintained recommendations based on machine learning analysis of communication patterns on the project so we'll look for tone of communication inclusivity 
in communication, but we'll be very careful to provide English language recommendations as opposed to um, what would be potentially arbitrary rankings. We don't want to we don't want to say you're this good or this bad. We want to provide concrete feedback on uh, that's qualitative uh, based on what we learned. So what we're developing on the Missouri end during that time are is that. But what, what I characterize as an ethical, thoughtful human in implementation of machine learning to, to help advance DEI and open source. And so then that information is part of, you know, those recommendations will be part of what's checked at the next badge level. So if we, we go through that whole process for bronze, then we go through it for silver, um, we'll, we'll take a look at recommendations and if we detect changes related to the recommendations we made the last time um, and that with the goal of it being having very low touch um, from a human perspective, but not not zero touch. OK, um, so I just kind of building on that, I know that as part of this process across the top, all in is providing resources. Yes, so all in is providing resources to chaos Africa. And to the university, no, no, no. like resources for um, communities to better understand how to improve DEI within their own projects. And so, Elizabeth, did yes, that link. I yeah, know that I, it yeah. is available. It is. Um, let me grab. I just forget if it's all in open source.org or com. I get it wrong, I whatever. I think, I think it is too. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, and I think like one of the um, goals of the the whole initiative is not necessarily to just give out badges like one and done. It's to help maintainers pro progress along the path. So I know All In wants to um, help them through resources and tooling and um, whatever they can do to help maintainers um, attend to these things in that, you know, make it a little easier for them to do that. If that makes sense, it does. It does. As they go, the the maintainers, the ideas, the maintainers will have to attend to more and more DEI metrics, kind of like how our event badging is. So, like instead of us giving the whole list at once, we're gonna like handhold them a little more and say, "Here's these four things. Do these, and now next level. Let's hear some more things you can do. And now the next level." <clears throat> so in event badging, we just throw it all out there at them at once and say, here are all the things, and now however many you can do is basically how you get your badge. So I think we need to to that comment then. Okay, so just so people kind of understand what's going on here is we're asking for projects to include a DEI.md file in their respective repository. That DEI.md file is a self-report on how a project attends to project burnout, newcomer experience, recognizing contribution, and inclusive leadership. At least that's the four metrics we have started with at the moment. Based on the presence of that, yeah, Kevin, go ahead. Oh, where, where is that work being done? So I, th I was working on that at some point, but yeah, uh, no, we, is, it, yes. is it happening someplace else now? Or Well, we talk about it in badging. So there is a badging meeting that's occurring. Okay. And we are still using that document that you created a long time ago. So that has not been thrown away. And so the test of the, is that okay, Kevin? Oh yeah, yeah, I was just curious where it was, where it was occurring, so. Okay, so the test of the DEI.md file is really just testing to ensure that the, that the, the file is not um, like, gibberish or garbage or bad that there's actually some um, some response to those four metrics the one thing that I haven't really thought about Elizabeth Sean we do we have talked about providing community members an opportunity to respond to that yeah we probably want to formalize like how that would occur you know so like probably somewhere in that mm -hmm. file like and I'm not sure if it's in there right now, but like if you're seeing problems between what's being reported and what you believe to be occurring in the community, yeah, some some way to to report that. Yeah, that's I feel like. <clears throat> sorry, Sean. Go ahead. 
Yep. So that that is that's what we have in mind with looking at the recommend. So the recommendations will come from a machine learning place um, without providing a machine learning score, and we'll be testing to see if those things change over time. And you know, candidly, we have to do a little trial and error uh, to make sure that you know we're we're giving feedback that's having having impact. No, no, no. I was talking about feedback coming from the community members. So if, if a, for example, if chaos has a DEI.md file, mm -hmm. and we say that we're great with respect to newcomer experience and newcomers are like, no, actually you're not. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how community members could potentially report that as saying there's a, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, so not, yeah, making that a, a way of um, sort of, coming up with a way to have projects, project participants report what their Just, thoughts. Yeah, if, if there's, if they believe to be some inconsistency between what's being reported. Okay. Because Kevin, really, really that's the only way that we can validate that what's in the DEI.md file is actual truth is we're yes. gonna have to rely on the communities. We had also talked about doing like random sampling of just yeah. like to verify mm -hmm. through reviewers, but that might be something that we, try to get all in to do <laughs> personally i think um because just that would be a lot like it'll yes. be a lot <laughs> right i agree kevin did you have a comment uh so for that for the machine learning component are you are you basically talking about sentiment analysis of the uh comments and issues i have a repertoire of seven strategies that are being used um sentiment analysis is only one of those we also have a, a large set of libraries from Health and Human Services in the U.S. government that looks at inclusive language explicitly. So we'll be applying those tools as well as uh, clustering projects, you know, according to the patterns of communication that they have, um, looking for uh, what the topics are, and also examining patterns of discourse analysis. So when questions are followed by answers. Um, and how conversant the project is overall. Are, are you doing some kind of human validation on that as well? Yes, to, uh, everything, um, everything is going to be human validated during the development process. Okay, let me know if you would like any help with that. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I would take help with that. <laughs> yeah, I, in the, the sentiment analysis that I've seen done is, uh, it's, it's really hard to do in open source because the language is often really neutral and technical. Yep. Uh, so anything uh, if you can create a tool that can can do it, uh, that would be a really really big deal. I'm, yeah, there's a, there's a yeah, there's a couple of <laughs> uh, just as an aside, there's a couple of um, trained sentiment models that actually are directed at software development mm -hmm. specifically because you know a bug defect those could be interpreted negatively. And, it's not. It's, and it's not should get positive, right? right? But yeah, or neutral. Or know, neutral. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. So we are using software engineering specific um, models for that part of it. But you know, you, okay. you, uh, but if you would like some help yeah. with validation on that, please yeah. let me know. I uh, definitely will take you up on that. Um, and so that's kind of this auger part. That this is what this conversation between Kevin and John is right now, or at least this discussion about the ML part. So then that report is provided back to the community. So at this point, the community has a report with respect to some of these components. I don't think all of them, Sean, it's not all seven that you necessarily mentioned. Right. It's, it's focused on communication inclusivity. Yes. And so at this point, the project has a DEI.md file in their repository and a report returned back to them from, from the Augur team or you know wherever we say that's coming from. This report is not made public, I think. Am I this is a report to the right. Companies. It's a report, it's a report to the the people who are maintainers on the project. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, so it's the idea is yeah, that would help it be ethical. <laughs> and so then in order to get a silver badge, to Elizabeth's point, I think we'll have to update this a little bit. It's continuing to address, you know, continuing to uphold that DEI.md file as addressing those four metrics and maybe a fifth one 
as we build out the metric set. Is that mm -hmm. correct, Elizabeth? So that's not captured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least as an example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because they'll have to do more to get those higher badges. Yeah, yeah. And Otherwise, I, the badge doesn't matter if they're just doing the same thing that they were doing for bronze. They just have to push the button again, mm -hmm. right? Will the will the platinum badge be double so, platinum or just Taylor Swift? Sorry, I don't, I don't get it, but <laughs> uh, she sells a lot of records, Matt. <laughs> So, and I think maybe in the DEI.MD file, <coughs> they have the silver part. Should we also, would that be where we would include a request for commentary as to how they are responding to that communication, or I'm sorry, the community inclusivity report? So, you know, they would say, here are the five metrics that we're still addressing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we also did receive a report. They can choose to share it or not. That's not our responsibility. But um, Here's here's what we're doing to improve communication inclusivity within our project as well, based on the report that we got. Do you think that should be in the DEI.md file? I, I kind of do, just from a centrality perspective. Okay. Yeah. Um, You're trying to, seven, but yeah. I see nods. I was gonna say that the last time I saw the document, uh, there is there is language in there that requires them to address and reevaluate the uh, those DEI issues, uh, so so that probably that probably is the place where they should uh, just address keep it, it. Keep it yeah. all centrally located, and then we do another test against that DEI.md file. Probably at this point, looking for, for example, not only the four but that newly um, newly provided fifth metric, along with some way to address the communication inclusivity report. And this process just continues on. So you can kind of see the DEI.MD file between a bronze badge, which only includes four metrics, and the platinum badge, which would include whatever, eight metrics, plus a response to all of the reports. So the platinum DEI.MD file is considerably larger than the bronze. Yeah. And and as I guess the question, keeping it in the same document, I I, th I think that's okay. Okay. Like that, you know, having one place to scan, to scan for it. Okay. It seems um, to make the most sense to me. Yeah, and so maybe the template that we have wouldn't. Uh, I guess would that be so they would include it in the DEI.MD. And then they'd also, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to think of the flow. I can sort that out with Ruth and Enoch, but there's a, a flow of granting the badge and a flow of checking the DEI.MD and, and a lot, you know, providing some, I think we'll, if we want to maintain some degree of automation, we just need to okay. um, provide some standard way to respond to different recommendations. And to present the information. Right. Yeah. Them. Okay. Because if yes, if we don't define a standard way that that's reflected in the DEI.MD badge, then we wouldn't be able to scan for that response Fair um, and make some evaluation of it. So, so I think also <clears throat> the so then to those resources and education sessions and outreach, what what these from what I understand, what these are meant to do is is help people through these these different badges particularly addressing the metrics that we're asking for or particularly addressing the reports that are provided to them so like if we give an inclusive a community um a community inclusivity report and we're like here are the things that you could work on it would make sense to provide resources as to how somebody might go about trying to improve community inclusivity you know what I mean? As opposed to saying, "Here's here's the report," and you you, you figure it out. So it'd be great yeah. to kind of help people along in that regard as well. It, am, am I right on the resources and education sessions there, Elizabeth? I think that's well. I know for sure about the resources. The education sessions, I think, are still kind of up in the air, but because okay. um, I don't know if like we have the capacity to host those or if All In would host those, I'm not okay. sure. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. I just, yeah, I, I mean, I still like them. I'd love to think about ways to yeah, agree, do them, mm -hmm. even if it was like on a quarterly basis or something like that, where we said, you know, we're going to talk about 
ways to address um, community inclusivity? Like what are things you can do within your community to help in that regard? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, any other comments or questions? From folks? We, should we use the um, project? Should we use this the regular badging channel in Slack to start publicly communicating about this, or should we create a project badging channel separately? Uh, I leave that to Elizabeth. What do you think? What I think whatever makes sense, whatever you want to do, Sean. If you're starting. Gonna be like real technical and you know having those kind of conversations, and maybe we have a separate channel. But if it's high level stuff, then. Like I was going to, I think I'm going to capture this requirement in that channel and tag Ruth and Enoch as an item to discuss, for example. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody. All right. Um, moving on. So I think we got that. So the with respect to metrics, we had talked about a couple last week. And I just wanted to bring up, I had <laughs> right before this meeting, um, <laughs> working on event location inclusivity, trying to address the comments that were in there and stuff like that. So I think it's coming along uh, real nicely. Um, so there was a, a question about uh, psychological safety that is here there's a conversation that's there and the this was linking out to psychological safety of i think a community or um it wasn't necessarily focused on an event so at this point i just removed the reference to it i think it's still a fine term to have in here um but that was my my approach towards that i did, i i do think it's the correct term but and I'm okay not linking it because the uh, that there there could be a little bit of yeah, confusion. The metrics just is a little so. bit off. So and I think in the it may all it made me think is like we would add a psychological safety for community and then a psychological safety for an event. Like it would just be two different metrics or update the psychological safety well, to include event yeah. specific things. That's what I was that's what I was actually thinking. Uh, maybe edit the psychological safety metric to kind of address any confusion that, that may be there. Because I, I think the original intent of the psychological safety metric was to be kind of inclusive of all these things. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I'm fine not having the link there. Okay. I'm not going to spell psychological safety, right? Yeah, wait. Matt, who owns that document? Kevin <clears throat> does. And so I, that is actually on the. I saw that line above. I was like, oh, I wonder who owns it. Um, okay. So I'm going to. If, if you're both okay, I'm going to close that conversation. Okay. Um, so, um, I will say part, part of that conversation was also addressing the, uh, oh yeah, there were two parts to it. Uh, how the, how the community, uh, responds to, uh, uh, issues when the event location is yes and not I think, the best. I also uh, think I, I captured that as well. Yeah. Uh, down down here. And yeah, really, really good comments about uh, Elizabeth on that. So okay. So um Elizabeth, I did add to this comment, I added civil unrest. I think that was the comment there. Cultural differences, civil unrest and local legislation. Is that okay? All right. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, I did add these, just this is pretty common right now in our metrics, like where we're kind of identifying, you know, people that might have a particular interest in the metric. So I did organizers, attendees, and sponsors, I thought were the, the three Yeah. that might care about this. Um, I did add what I, I also added I updated these images and I added a date for these because these do change. For example, Nebraska yeah. went from red to blue. 
Yeah. Since the last. Missouri's yeah, Missouri's not heading in that direction, unfortunately. <laughs> so um that's what's going on there. Um I thought these tools were great. I mean, and so I was if Josh was on, I was gonna see if he wanted to add anything. Otherwise, I was just gonna resolve this issue or uh this comment. No. The only the only thought I have about event location inclusivity is the yeah, you know, I think when you, there was a thing above about conflicting events occurring, and I think the reality is open source events are usually national, at least, or regional in nature and are planned farther in advance than some of these gatherings of hate groups. So, I mean, it might be impossible to overcome that. Like, you may, it might. It may, it may be yeah. difficult to um, to to know that and, and deal with it in advance simply because those kinds of events are usually less actually i heard there's a less well planned and they happen pretty quick with fosdom this year so yeah but i think that's where elizabeth's comment from earlier comes in so it's not just about the selection of the event but it's also how the event addresses situations like that when it arises so right the, the event if uh if there is something that's happening that could uh be problematic how the event communicates with the, the participants and the potential attendees is, is, is part of this metric or part of it's, yeah. it's in a few places. So it's yeah. here. Event organizers should be aware. Um, and then can we I put yeah. it here as well may want to signal disruptions to inclusivity. I think there's another part down below as well. Yeah, it's a, it's in a few uh, places. Yeah, so it's built in. Uh, so I think that addresses your your issue, Sean. Yep. Cool. I just had a thought, shared it. Um, Elizabeth, I put these were questions that were um, just immediately below implementation. I went ahead and put them in a subheading, the subheading of data collection strategies. That sounds good. Okay. So I didn't change. I really didn't change anything. I just moved them. So a question, <clears throat> when we add this to our um, event badging application, yeah. how do you think we should ask this? Just like ask, has the event, have you checked for this yeah. issue? And yeah. if so, you know, are you communicating to your attend? Okay. Yeah. And if there's anything, yeah, you feel that needs to be communicated to attendees and sponsors, have you done that? I mean, uh, I, as far as the reviewer goes, that's going to kind of be hard to check. It you will. Know, like, how are we supposed to verify? Are we supposed to also research, you know, the place where they are? Are we just going to take their word for it? So uh, uh, one of the, uh, if I remember correctly on the, one of the, uh, one of the questions that they have on the uh, event badging is that they survey the attendees about uh, DEI. Is that correct? Yeah, after the fact. Mm -hmm. So that that survey, we could we could uh, we could have how inclusive was the event location added to that survey, or ask them to ask that. Uh, so we could get it kind of on both ends. So the uh, the event the event is addressing it, but we're also surveying the participants to ensure uh, event event location inclusivity. That would be a yeah, I, I like that. I mean, maybe we can include that here originally too as a data collection strategy. Um, so, event organizers can include a post-conference question asking about um, event. This is what you're talking about, right? Yeah. And I, and I, I will say this. There, the, the reality of these conferences are that, I mean, people are going to have conferences in Texas, and Texas is maybe a place that uh, is not North super friendly right now. And North Carolina. Is North Carolina or, or Florida. Florida. So, Florida. so a, a big part of this, I think, is to Elizabeth's point earlier about how the conferences address that, even if it is in one of these spaces. I, it, this reminds me, actually, a lot of the public health safety metric that Josh had brought forward. So it's just, it's about signaling, um, you know, public health measures that are in place 
mm -hmm. either at the conference or kind of in the region. And I don't, I don't have a sense that that metric is about the event organizers need to fix it necessarily. Mm -hmm. They just, or, or they have to do a particular thing mm -hmm. that it's just about that they're being clear about what is going on with respect to public health. And the Sorry. same too for um, event accessibility, like obviously there are things they can do to help with that, but it's also about how you communicate that to your, your attendees to let them choose. And I think that's what those, these three metrics are putting it in the control in the hands of the attendees to make the decision if they want to go, given yep. all the information that they have. Although I, I, I do think it does have to be like when they choose the event location that has to be a uh, they have to be aware that they are choosing a location that is less inclusive. Uh, so it kind of has, it does have to be both about the selection and the, and the way they communicate. Um, say that again. So it, it, I, a lot of it is about kind of signaling, uh, signaling to the, uh, the event attendees and, and communicating uh, yeah. your stance to the event attendees. But I, but I, but I do think this metric is also about selecting the location right so having a conference in texas for example right now is you are making that decision even though you are aware that that location is maybe less inclusive yeah i'm i'm definitely on the first one i can see some caveats with the second point so like um i don't think this is going to happen but like if if belgium started changing their laws like Fosdem couldn't pivot probably that quickly mm -hmm. and so I mean it'd be hard for them to just move out right and, and, and I'm yeah I'm not saying they have to I'm just saying we have to kind of include both ideas so it's it, it's it's both uh, but I, I don't think if if this is on event badging it's not a it's not a failing badge because it's in because the conference is in oh definitely not Texas yeah or, particularly because there are all those ancillary conferences too that yeah. just kind of have to follow a decision that was made like way out of their scope sometimes right yeah so it's it's a it's both of those things it's both the selection of the location and how the event addresses it but I but I don't think we should diminish the selection because I, yeah. I do think that's important. To, uh, yeah, to I mean, I, 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 if I'm organizing a conference, I'm trying not to go do it in Florida, for example. Yeah. I think, well, yeah, let's talk about it in badging. It, at least in the first pass, mine would really be to the former. Like, how are the event organizers signaling how they understand inclusivity to their sponsors? Yeah, I'm just going to ask them to check, like, just have you looked to see if this, if you're, mm -hmm. you know, like, and that's, that'll get the check. And if it is, then how are you communicating yeah. uh, that they'll still get the check, even if the, it is, like you said, in a place that's not great, as long as they checked right. and they're aware of it, that's, that's enough for me. All right. Yeah, for, for badging, I think that's how you, right on. that's how you do it. Uh, but for the, for this metric, though, I think the, uh, we need to include both those things. As the, Do you think the other ones included in here? Yeah, I think the way it's written now okay. is is I think it's okay. coming along really well, and I think it addresses both those those issues okay. the 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 selection and the uh, and the communication. Yeah, but okay. from the actual badging, though, I, I completely agree. We just you just have to ask like is the is your event, Do you believe that your event location is inclusive? <laughs> and are you okay? Um, so. Um, could we, Kevin, right now, this metric is owned by you. Which one? The one we were just looking at. Oh, yeah. Can you? Wait, isn't it in, uh, isn't it in uh, the chaos? Uh... It just says it's owned by you. So like if I click on that, it says Kevin Lombard's the owner. Oh, I, could have, I really thought that was in the, the chaos folder. Yeah. It, um, I don't know if it is. How do I check that here? I don't even know how to from here to check what folder it's in. Oh, uh, yeah. Nonetheless, could you check on that one? Uh, what do you need me to check? Do you need to transfer it or? Yeah, if that's okay with you. Uh huh. Because I do like to keep these all in what you were talking about. Uh, yeah, let me, I'll take a look. Okay. Thanks. Um, so. 
Josh isn't here right now. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure. This one is, I think, ready to go. Oh, you um, do? Okay. Yeah, I think it's ready. And I saw that they've badged their first event. I did see so that. So I think they're, they're okay. <clears throat> if we publish and add it to the badging and everything, I think they're ready. Okay. <clears throat> so it sounds like a to do then is to get both of these. All three. There's, oh, yeah, event accessibility. What's the other one? Out there, but what was the other one? Accessibility, mm -hmm. event accessibility. Is but that already out there? Mm -hmm, it's already published. Okay. I just need to add it to badging. Okay. And by chance, have you heard from anybody at the LF? Annie did respond and said she would spread the word. Okay. <laughs> so. okay. So, so you did. That's good. I mean, okay. That's, that's great. Thank you for that. Um, so let's see. Um, Mary Blessing, I see that you're on. I wanted to see if you wanted to talk a little bit about the tour guides work that you're doing or kind of see where that's at. Don't mean to put you on the spot too, but love to hear from you. I meant to say tour guides. Uh, so just so just so you know, event location inclusivity is inside the all chaos docs. So okay. it does exist in there. But you own it. But I own it. I don't okay. know. How do you can I transfer ownership you to the can. chaos community? How do I do that? I don't know. <laughs> yes, and that's the end of my knowledge. Okay. <laughs> I'm good with yes, no questions. <laughs> so it, it is in the right place. Okay, that's good. But I don't know. I'll I'll figure out how to transfer. Okay. All right, great. Um, well, if I guess if if we don't have an update on the tour guides, then I think we're kind of done for the day. I think we just have the to bring these metrics forward, Elizabeth, and kind of get them published. And I think we're good to go. And take a second to look at all of your all of your pet names. We have Mayor, Stinker, Huckleberry, Bubbles, Raisin, and Lucy and Nutter Butter. Wally the cat and kitty. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Soggy bottoms. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. It's it's good to see you all. And I think we're good for the day. Yeah, sounds good. Talk to you all later. Okay. Take care, Bye -bye. everybody. Bye.